Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us for GetOpsCon Europe today. Uh, Pinky, Ravi, and I will be giving you an update on the GetOps Working Group, as Scott mentioned. But first, uh, let's introduce ourselves. Pinky? Hey, I'm Priyanka Ravi. I also go by Pinky, and I am a developer experience engineer at WeWorks, and I'm also a member of the GetOps Working Group and a uh, member of the Flux Project. <laughs> nice. Uh, hi, friends. I'm Stacy. I'm a program manager, open source community at Dynatrace, primarily working on CNCF projects, Captain and Open Feature. Formerly, I was at Weaveworks with Pinky and crew uh, and had the pleasure of working with the Flux team over there. Um, I'm also a member of the GetOps Working Group Marketing Events and Media Teams, which we'll cover in um, in a bit on the, the later presentation. So um, I've been contributing uh, a contributing member of the Open GetOps uh, Project and the GetOps Working Group since kind of the early days. So now that we've introduced ourselves, let's introduce the GetOps Working Group and the Open GetOps Project a little bit. So. The GitOps Working Group lives within the Cloud Native Computing Foundation's Technical Advisory Group for Application Delivery, also known as the CNCF Tag App Delivery. For those who may be unfamiliar with the working groups uh, and tags, uh, the tags work within the CNCF, and we'll dive into that a little bit right now. So CNCF tags oversee and coordinate interests of uh, specific areas for end users, uh, and or projects. So with tag app delivery, focusing on projects and initiatives related to delivering cloud native applications, including building, packaging, deploying, uh, managing and operating them. So our focus within the GitOps working group is to clearly define a vendor neutral principle led meaning of GitOps. Um, and I will let Pinky kind of dive into the open GitOps project a little bit on the next slide, but it is also kind of guided by the working group. Yeah, so Open GitOps is a CNCF sandbox, sandbox project to define a vendor neutral principle led meaning of GitOps. So this will establish a foundation for interoperability between tools, conformance, and certification through lasting programs, documents, and code. OpenGitOps.dev is the website to find out more about the Open GitOps project and also get involved in the GitOps working group as well. So <clears throat> I want to uh, go over the GitOps principles really quick. Um, uh, Nicholas actually did a GitOps 101 talk just uh, a few minutes ago, and he dives into great detail on each of these as well as how they map to modern practices. Um, but I'm going to review them just in case you missed that talk, but definitely go back and watch it if you can. It was really great and detailed. So the first principle is that a system managed by GitOps must have its desired state expressed declaratively. So everything is written in code. It's more reusable this way. There's an audit trail, things like that. Um, the second principle, and, and uh, just to quickly mention, that principle maps to um, things such as configuration as code, infrastructure as code, DevOps and DevSecOps practices, as well as GitOps. And then the second principle is that a desired state is stored in a way that enforces immutability, versioning, and retains a complete version history. So there's no sneaking in a change at all. Um, and this relates more to infrastructure as code, um, DevOps and DevSecOps, as well as GitOps. So we've dropped off configuration as code there. And then the third one is that software agents automatically pull the desired state declarations from the source. And this is more DevOps and DevSecOps and, and GitOps as well. And then the one that's more purely GitOps and stands out for GitOps is that software agents continuously observe actual system state and attempt to apply the desired state. And these are these principles are a set of best practices that have been um, defined through discussions with many different vendors and user experiences by the GitOps working group. And um, as I mentioned earlier, you can go to opengitops.dev to learn more about that and also check out more about the principles there as well. And don't feel like you have to have all of them done in order to get started using GitOps. Everyone's journey with GitOps looks different and you can always get started with it and then add in hardening and tweak your setup to meet these guidelines as you go. So Pinky, I did want to just interject here quickly yeah. because I noticed in Nicholas's talk um, on the last session before the break, Somebody had asked, you know, uh, the what is the difference really between 
three and four, I don't really understand the big difference between three mm -hmm. and four. So would you mind just yeah. kind of diving into yeah. the differences between those a little bit more? Yeah. So three and four, I always usually lump them together when I talk, but they're actually different in the sense that three is saying that changes are pulled instead of pushed, but also four is then going a step further from just pulling the changes in to continuously checking, hey, has anything for some reason gotten out of sync? And we use the term drip detection in that in that regard and say that um, if things for some reason have been accidentally changed, this operator will actually make the changes back to what's declaratively stated in the um, repository, for example. And so that's the difference, yeah. Thanks Amazing. for bringing that up. Thanks, yeah. All right, so now we'd like to talk about some exciting announcements we have. Um, the first one being that the certified GitOps associate um, certification goes beta in Q1 of next year. Very excited about this. The invitation list is full, but you can add your name to the wait list um, by going clicking on the link on this slide that's stated here. And we really wanna give a huge thanks to everyone who's making the certified GitOps associate program happen. Um, they've been working tirelessly since August, and we really appreciate all the hard work. Uh, if we did forget to put your name on this slide, we're very sorry, but we're really, really grateful to anyone that's helped out with this process. Yeah, thank you all so much. This is so exciting. Um, <clears throat> and for events, uh, we have some news from ArgoCon, uh, which was co-located at KubeCon in Chicago back in November. Um, so this was a full day three tracks uh, and peak attendance was around 601 with an average of about 475 people in attendance uh, during any session. Uh, the top three sessions that are that are listed here, you can go and check those out. Um, and then I've also included a link on this slide for the entire uh, playlist for so you can go back and watch all of these sessions um, from their original recordings. Um, ArgoCon in North America is going to be, I'm sorry, um, ArgoCon KubeCon EU will be at KubeCon EU in Paris uh, in 2024. Um, so if you haven't already registered for that, you can go and check that out at the link as well. And stay tuned for our uh, GitOpsCon North America announcement. Hopefully we'll be able to release all the details of that very soon, but we're just trying to pin down those final details for you. So how can you get involved with the Open GitOps and GitOps Working Group? So you can find the Open GitOps project on GitHub at github.com uh, slash open dash GitOps. But the main uh, entry point for anyone new is the project repo. Uh, but please have a look at docs where you'll find the principles and glossary. Uh, events if you want to attend our community project meetings and the website. Even though this is looking pretty good, we can always use some extra help. Uh, if any of those things interest you, please go to Open GitOps uh, project in uh, GitHub and check those out. Yeah, so the project is run by its members and we're growing. Folks are organizing topic teams, um, subgroups within the GitOps working group such as the GitOps Environmental Sustainability Team, the Marketing, Media, and Events Team. And uh, there are a few proposed teams for things like security and media fact-checking, and there are also paused or archived teams as well. So if you're interested in any of these, please, um, you know, get involved in any of them. Uh, you can also find discussions in the Open GitOps uh, project repo as well. So if you're looking for answers to questions, uh, you can check there uh, first. And otherwise, here are a bunch of links where you can find us. If you would like to scan the QR code, this will actually take you to the Open GitOps website, website and to the Get Involved page that we have dedicated to this. Um, but you can star and watch the open GitOps uh, documents. Uh, that's a really easy entry point if you want to get involved. Um, the tag app delivery and GitOps working group um, links are in here as well on GitHub. So you can check those out um, and join us for a meeting um, on the first and third Wednesday at uh, 1900 GMT 
I think Eastern time, it's around two or three in the, in the afternoon. I can't remember exactly. Um, I always get my time zones messed up and uh, yeah, join on, on the discussions, open an issue, uh, join the CNCF tag app delivery mailing list, which we, where we live under, and you'll get uh, updates regarding the working group and the open GitOps project there as well. And, you know, if you have something that you're passionate about uh, in and around GitOps, feel free to come and share with us. Um, yeah, so for more ways to get involved, again, open getops.dev slash get dash involved or scan this QR code. Yeah, and we really, really love people joining the meetings. And so you can really come and just chat with us about whatever. There's always time in there for people to come and share their ideas or just show us cool things and um, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much. Um, and yeah, I think that's kind of it for the update for the working group and the uh, Open GetUps project. So at this time, I'd like to invite Scott back on, see if we have any questions or if there's anything that uh, he has for us that we maybe missed in our presentation. Maybe he wants to chat a little bit. <laughs> hey, Scott. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for that. Um, Nikki and Stacy, that's, I love that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I think that there's a couple of things that we could cover, but um, one thing I just wanted to note is that I I added a little extra little extra flourish um, to that question about the difference between three and four in the platform. Um, and for anyone watching this who's not looking at the platform right now, um, the main the main thing I I like to tell people, uh, I mean like what Pinky said is absolutely 100% correct. That's, uh, but I also just like to tell people like some of the reasons why too. Um, there's a bunch of reasons, you know, but one of one of the main ones from my point of view is that like how you get from principle three to four, uh, when Pinky was mentioning how in principle four, you're doing the, checking the difference between your desired state and the actual state. Well, that has to, three has to be able to happen, um, your, your system has to be able to access your, desire, your declarative desired state at any time. Um, that's why we actually say pull specifically, um, because it, it, it needs to be able to know what, that, what your current um, plan is for your running system in order for number four to continue to try to see what the difference is and reconcile those those two by updating your running system. So, you know, if you, if, if for an event-based system, a push-based system only, um, you would only, your system would only have your changes, you know, um, after you, after you make a git commit or something like that, and those also can fail. Um, so, so yeah, there, there are, there are really clear reasons why um, we say that, and I hope that that helps to make sense. Um, yeah, that's great. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. So I guess, is there anything maybe that you could shed some light on, Scott, about kind of uh, the future of the GitOps working group and maybe uh, the Open GitOps project, kind of what you what what might be something that we can look forward to or anything like that for the future? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, um, so I know you had you've already, you two already covered you know uh, uh, the structure of the group, the teams, and and that there are discussions that are going on um, in GitHub discussions. Um, I'm tempted to share my screen, but I guess I don't really. You know what? I'll go ahead and try it. Okay. Uh, there we go. Can you all see my screen? Yeah. Uh, well, okay. not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Uh, if there's a if there's an issue too, I, I didn't really give the <laughs> the AV people a heads up, so hopefully <laughs> this works. Uh, if not, it's my bad. But um, let's see. Let me know if anyone else can't see this. Um, but 
Oops, excuse me, sorry. Well, uh, I think they can see it. Scott. it could my be. gosh. Okay. Okay. So, so the most important thing is within the uh, the project repo under Open Dash GitOps and GitHub, you've got a folder called Teams. Um, there's a lot of other information here about you know the GitOps principles and so on and how to get all the you know everything else you need. But Teams specifically, there's a file that explains what it's about and why. You know uh, why we why we have teams in the first place, um, and mainly the answer is that we have different work projects. For example, there was a team of people who put together the principles. Um, there's a team of people who work on the uh, events, such as the one that you're all at today. Um, there are teams of people who are monitoring, or at least trying to uh, monitor um, different um, media that's going out that's describing what GitOps is about. Some of them are uh, from before uh, there were official GitOps principles, official for, meaning by the CNCF, um, and some, you know, may be unaware of that fact and might not be totally accurate. So, so for so uh, here is a list of the teams. Um, there's some information about basically what the process is for joining a team and recommending or suggesting new teams, um, but. Uh, and in short, it's uh, make a GitHub issue um, or just talk with us at any point and we'll help you. Um, and so the current teams are uh, what I had mentioned before, uh, the media team, et cetera. The proposed team that I'm talking about is actually, we've got to move that to an active team because that's actually becoming active again, finally. Um, that's the media fact checking team. Um, it's under the marketing team and it's mainly like what I was just saying is just trying to be friendly and helpful to um, to everyone in the wider community about really the principle-led definition of GitOps and all of the things that uh, Stacey and Pinky just covered. So I'm mentioning this now because for a bunch of folks have asked how they can get involved um, and not just like the pat answers are we've already covered them, but like in detail, um, really it's all about collaboration. And uh, there is a group of folks who, excuse me, uh, as you can see, who are working on um, the environmental sustainability teams. Uh, really what that's about is GitOps impact, known impacts and potential impacts on um, ecological sustainability. Um, for, for better and hopefully not for worse. <laughs> I think it depends on how you configure it and, and how you set yourself up. But um, but there's a there's a whole lot of people there, and some of this is working on a white paper. And it's a tie across uh, between our working group under the app delivery tag and the environmental sustainability tag for technical advisor group. So um, anyway, this just helps give you a sense of what you can do and. Um, The discussions um, really need to be picked back up upon, but they um, they have a number of topics where you know you can really, uh, for example, there's a topic about the certified GitOps associate exam that the Linux Foundation is putting out. There's a topic about GitOps at scale patterns, um, etc. So there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things that are that are important and valuable here, and just check it out. Uh, I'll just give you one. I'll give you one example um, to look at is the fact checking team I just mentioned. There's a help wanted tag. Uh, this just this just really goes through what the motivation behind it is. Uh, mostly what I just said, um, and specifically a proposed stance. You know, like not to somehow say that we're telling people they're wrong and that we, they need to fix it, but more just that we're trying to participate with folks. Um, and there's a lot of chat here. Feel free to join these. Um, uh, there is another issue that I think is relevant to today that I'm just going to point out. Um, I want to um, Oh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, there's a there was a there was a GitOps machine learning subgroup, an AI ML subgroup, um, 
in October last year. Uh, this was being discussed for a lot longer, but you know, it also happened before this like more recent explosion of interest in AI um, that seems to be you know capturing public imagination. Um, a lot of people said they were interested, but no one showed up to the meeting. So this is not like pointing any fingers. This is just saying that it's uh, in order for these groups to work, there has to be some um, regular participation. And a lot of the other uh, teams do have that. This one just did not, so it was closed down, and that's why it's listed um, in this uh, inactive team. And that's to say, not saying that uh, it couldn't resurface again, right, Scott? So that's right. If this is a topic that interests you, uh, and you want to get involved, come back, you know, reach out, open the discussion, contribute to this discussion. And, uh, and we can definitely pick that back up again. Exactly, yeah, and, I, and I misspoke, a pause team. Sorry, thank I was just going to say, William's really interested in this one, so he yeah. would definitely help. Like, if someone was interested in working it with them, I'm sure he would. Yeah, I'll paste it into the chat, um, the issue, and I'll also do that in the Open GitOps um, channel. Fantastic. But yeah, let's take a look and see. Uh, does anyone have any any questions? Okay, I see nothing in Q and A. That's cool. So we can just continue to to, ch to chat. Um, uh, oh, there is one other thing I want to highlight um, about the teams. So if anyone here is interested in helping but doesn't feel like you, they necessarily have, um, oh, I don't know, skills yet to be an expert in any topic, that's completely okay. Um, this whole thing is about meeting people where they're at, meeting organizations where they're at as well. That's part of the idea of GitOps is that it's not, uh, there is a maturity model um, being put together, but it really, and some companies have done that. For example, WeFirst has a maturity model for GitOps, and I, I think some of the other companies have also made their own. But um, while there while there might not be an official one, the stance is shared between everyone um, that it's all about uh, it's not about demerits for not being somewhere. It's about where are you now? What does your business need, and how can we help you continue to move through? Um, the different actions that are based on these principles. So uh, with that in mind, if anyone here is loves marketing or is good at doing social stuff like posting on Twitter uh, or helping to with any design things, like we have, essentially it's all volunteer. So we have a team to do that that was also listed on that page and we would love, um, and we love your uh, your participation. Yeah, and actually on that, we got a question saying how much knowledge or what level of exper expertise do you need to contribute? I think you basically just covered that. We welcome anyone of any kind, uh, like any level of expertise you have, there's things you can contribute from like documentation, you know, um, things like that. But yeah, and you guys have nothing to add to that too. Like Scott said, I, I'm i I'm not a GitOps practitioner per se myself. Um, but you know, I've been in marketing in the past. I'm a community manager, so I help out with those kinds of things. If that if that's your shtick, then come and join us in that way as well. You don't you don't have to be you know an expert on the principles. You don't have to you know if you're good at like Scott said, if you're good at Twitter, socials, being in the community, getting the word out, you know anything like that. We're again, we're all here out of the uh, the love of the space and being a collaborative team. So. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. Yeah, if you're like a little shy, just join, maybe join our meetings. You can like lurk for a bit. <laughs> like that's how I got started. I kind of just joined the meetings. It was really quiet. <laughs> yeah, be a fly on the wall for sure. That's <laughs> totally fine. You know, you don't have to speak at meetings. You don't have to, um, you know, contribute in, in the beginning. But if you want to just show up and kind of be there and see how things go, uh, that's fine too. We have fun in our meetings as well. So it's nice. Yeah. Cool. So I um, 
I also want to mention that, uh, you know, I basically I could go on and on about this and I, I've sort of just been picking what just a few topics. Um, but, um, but there are some interesting topics that I think are kind of like, if anyone is in the audience, just kind of like ultimately waiting to just pull up popcorn and wait until like any, any kind of drama happens, um, <laughs> you can help with that too. Uh, we're, we're, uh, you know, writing some posts about comparing different tools. Um, several of us have done that in the past. Um, I know Christian and I both collaborated on um, some content for a, an article that was published about comparing um, Flux and Argo at that time. Um, we've done other, other versions of that. Um, right now, there's a number of us working on a comparison between Flagger and Argo rollouts. And that's specifically something that Buoyant has been participating in and helping with because people ask about Linkerd, for example, what should I use for progressive delivery? So we're working on that now. Um, there are many topics like that, that uh, really all you have to do is, is ask. Um, mostly we try to put them in the discussion list on, on GitHub discussions on the project, on the GitHub, excuse me, on Open GitOps project. But um, sometimes that might lag a little bit behind. Um, but yeah, that's where you can come in just to, you know, bring, bring your own uh, comments. Um, and also you can start topics too. You can also just do emoji ops and just come in and give your, <laughs> give, uh, give your smiley faces or your thumbs down or, or literally whatever you want to do, your rocket emojis. Um, and to show your support that way, if you feel too shy to leave comments um, or you just want to troll. <laughs> Yeah, and I think we I think we are um, going to uh, have a um, have breakout sessions in about in just a little over a minute. So I just wanted to you know thank you um, Pinky and thank you Stacy for this keynote. It's really it's really helpful. Um, Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Have a great rest of the conference, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Um, and a reminder uh, to anyone who might have joined late, click uh, the breakouts uh, horizontal tab on the left in your portal. That'll get you to the list of, of, uh, of breakouts where you can pick and you can go between them if you want to. Um, basically, like you, as if you were in a live conference, just walking from one room to another. Um, and we'll see you there. Thanks.